I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. The Treehouse Show is brought to you by Treehouse. If you want to learn web design, web development, and so much more, check out teamtreehouse.com show for a 30-day free trial. In this episode, we'll be talking about a web design field manual, asynchronous scripts, file uploads, and more. Let's check it out. First up is Designing for the Web, which is a field manual for web design. Now, if you're not familiar, web design has just hit version 1.0, so we're out of the beta period for web design. We were in is, it for a while. Yeah, so this is really great. We were in it to win it. You can see that they're using a hamburger menu, which as we discussed in the previous episode, is maybe something you don't want to do, so maybe they'll take that out in V2. Yeah, are we sure this is version 1.0? I, that's what it says. Huh. V1.0.0. Summer of 2014, or 014, as Nick says. Any web design manual would be incomplete without starting with a quote from Steve Jobs. So there that is. Then you have some resources here to learn about web design, maybe share your stuff on Dribbble, check out some responsive design patterns, learn things on Medium. Lots of great stuff in here. So definitely be sure to check out those links. There's then a whole list of style guides, do's and don'ts, and you can learn about style guides there. And do here, make a style guide. Don't use hamburger menus. Then there's this list of resources. Every about, time you say hamburger menu, I, I want a hamburger. You're just super hungry, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. For a hamburger. <laughs> there's some resources here where you can learn more about style guides. So. These are all of these style guides from companies like MailChimp, Mozilla, Salesforce, and so on. You can learn about process and lots of other cool stuff. So there's quite a few more sections here. Lots of really amazing resources. I know I was making fun of this, but it's actually pretty cool. So definitely be sure to check out this field manual of web design. Yeah, we've talked about a lot of those things on the show too. So mm -hmm. that's, you know, it's nice to be validated. Hmm. That was a web design joke. Get it? Validation. Next up, we have a blog post by Ilya Grigoric on the script-injected async scripts are considered harmful. So what is a script-injected async script? So here's an example up here. You have a script embedded in the page where you are just going to get a little piece of JavaScript that you are including on your page. And that is bad because it blocks the rest of the requests from going through. While that JavaScript is requested, the DOM cannot be properly rendered. So the good way to do it is to create a script variable in JavaScript, give it the source, and then append the child to the document. Now, what is the difference between the two? Well, in the bad example, the DOM construction is blocked, but in the good example, more the request can happen asynchronously. Now, that is great, but it does come at a little cost, which is that the CSS object model is also blocked while that script is gotten and retrieved, and then nothing else on the page can be rendered. So the solution after all of this is to add this little async attribute right here. And when you add the async attribute, the CSS object model is not blocked while the JavaScript is fetched and rendered into the page. So that is the long story short. That's the TLDR. For more information and background, go ahead and check out this blog post. Well, if I could inject myself into this next segment, I'd like to talk about the scroll up bar. That was pretty bad. It was. The scroll up bar, which is this design pattern that's currently growing in popularity. So if we head over to the New York Times website, you can look at the navigation bar right here, and when I scroll down the page, bam, it pops to the top of the page. And as I scroll up and down, it stays there. So this has been dubbed the uh, scroll up bar. Actually, I should say the thing we're going to talk about later is the scroll up bar. But this has become a popular design pattern to have this fixed position bar at the top of the page. Forbes does a very similar thing, and it's kind of spreading all over the all over the place. The problem 
is that this takes up some precious screen real estate on mobile devices. So the suggested solution in this blog post is to instead hide that bar as you're scrolling down and when you scroll back up, reveal the bar again. So see when you scroll up, it disappears and when you scroll back down, it reappears. So why would you want to do that? Well, it's right here at the end. Scrolling up won't necessarily mean the user wants the navigation, but 100% of the people wanting the navigation will be scrolling up. So that's a little bit confusing. The math, I think it checks out. To, uh, to think about, but that's actually a really good explanation of why you would want to do that. Anyway, I thought this was a pretty cool design pattern, so definitely something to think about. And uh, yeah, if you want to read more about that or check out the sample, you can get to it at the show notes at youtube.com slash goattreehouse. Also, if you'd like to sign up for a 30-day free trial of Treehouse, check out teamtreehouse.com slash show. Next up, we have a project called Angular File Upload. This is a really, really interesting project. It's a JavaScript library that allows you to have multiple simultaneous stable and resumable uploads via the HTML5 file API. Now, we've talked about different upload libraries on this show before. Well, what makes this different? There's actually a server-side component to this as well that is written in PHP. And what it does is it breaks up the different files into smaller chunks. Now, when it uploads those chunks, it does so separately and then reassembles them later on the server. This allows you to have some really cool behavior like being able to pause and resume file uploads on the client and the server and come back to it later. This is great if, say, the network connection drops out while your user is uploading files or they accidentally close the browser tab or something like that. Or maybe somebody picks up the phone at home and kills your internet connection. Oh, yeah, that was a thing back in the days of modems. Remember those? Is that, do people not use those anymore? No, they don't. Oh. Welcome to 2014, Nick. So there is a demo on the site where you can upload a file or a folder. And if you want to, you can actually check out the documentation for the Angular part of it and also is completely available on GitHub. So go ahead and check that out. We'll also have a link to that in the show notes. Very cool stuff. Well, next up is Compressor.io. Maybe you've used images on a website before and you were like, man. These I've never seen images on a website? These images are really, really big and taking up a lot of space. Yeah, I'm sure that's why you probably don't use them. Well, Compressor.io, as you might imagine, compresses images. So here is a before and after of this picture of an iguana, and I can move the slider back and forth, and... I don't see anything that's different. You might not see any change at all. I see no all. changes. And that's what you would want, though, with a good compression library. You want to see Nothing. Absolutely no change from the compressed version and the original version other than a smaller file size. So one of these images is 700K and the other one is 250K and it's compressing it by 64% in this particular case. However, they claim that compressor can compress images up to 90%, which is pretty insane. I like that there's two different options for it, you know, lossless and lossy where if you don't mind if little bits of the image don't look quite as good, you know, to get a little bit more compression out of it, you can actually enable that feature as well. So that's it's pretty cool. It's pretty amazing. So why would you use this if you can use something like JPEG, P Ping, GIF, or SVG? Well, it actually compresses the files even more. So if we go to the About page, it's actually using several open source libraries to do this. and some things that are coming next are batch uploading, increasing the maximum file size limit, uh, an offline desktop version, and more. So it would be really great if we could get something like this into, say, Grunt or Gulp or one of those front-end task runners. Ooh, very nice. Very, very good idea. But you can try it by clicking the Try It button, and right now you can just drag and drop your images right onto this area and it will go ahead and compress them. Very, very, very cool. Pretty amazing. Next up, we have a hacker's guide to Git. Now, I'm not completely sure that we should trust this because the website it's on is called Wildly Inaccurate, but 
uh, it does have some really great advice about using Git. Now, this is not going to be a full tutorial to Git, although it is very thorough. Uh, this tutorial focuses on real-world work and what you will be doing most of the time as a quote-unquote hacker or somebody who codes and uses Git. So it's a great tutorial. It walks you through initializing a Git repository, goes through the different tree objects, displays how to merge and what all the different parts of Git really are. I am not going to get into this whole thing because it is a very, very long tutorial and this is a relatively short show, but trust me, it is worth reading. Check it out in the show notes. And that is about all we have time for today. Nick, who are you on Twitter? I am at NickRP. And I am at Jay Cipher. For more information on anything we talked about, check out our show notes at youtube.com slash go treehouse. You can also search for us on iTunes. We are the Treehouse Show. Don't forget, for a free month of Treehouse, check out teamtreehouse.com slash show. Of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one about web design, web development, mobile business, and so much more, you can check us out at teamtreehouse.com slash show and get a free month. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next week.